डालस 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 क्या हाल है क्या हाल है क्या हाल है मैं हूं आपका दोस्त आपका साथी डीजे मोदी विद फनेश रेडियो 104.9 एफएम जो कि दिन रात सुबह शाम सिर्फ आपके लिसनिंग प्लेजर के लिए आता है जितने लोग फनेश रेडियो सुन रहे हैं अभी इस वक्त आपका शुक्रिया धन्यवाद मेहरबानी आप सब के वजह से ही हमारा रेडियो चलता है अ लीडर्स जर्नी क्या है ये लीडर्स जर्नी लीडर्स जर्नी इज अ प्लेस वेयर वी ब्रिंग लीडर्स फ्रॉम आवर कम्युनिटी जिन्होंने बहुत मेहनत करके कुछ जगह बनाई है जिनसे हम बहुत कुछ सीख सकते हैं सो वंस अगेन टुडे आई एम ऑर्डर टू हैव डॉक्टर सीमा हक अ डिप्लोमेट ऑफ अमेरिकन बोर्ड ऑफ साइकेट्री एंड न्यूरोलॉजी डॉक्टर सीमा हक वेलकम टू फन एशिया रेडियो Thank you Moody thank you for uh, to Vishali Thakkar and Moody Akhtar for giving me this opportunity to be on this show thank you so very much you're so welcome uh, dr seema before we start talking about heavy duty neurology and psychiatry anything you would like to share where you were brought up where you did your college any background so folks the listeners of anisha can relate to you in some sure. way or fashion sure so i am uh, from down medical school from karachi pakistan um just to keep it short and simple i'm in private practice uh, mom of three kids um and uh, i have offices in arlington and mansfield thank you that's great so uh, getting deep down so listeners of funny show video agar aap sun rahe hai bahut important topic hai hamare community ke liye hamare liye pure society ke liye we all have one thing that we try to avoid or maybe i should say i try to avoid is a word called depression depression se sunte hai to bhagna dil karta hai bhag jao so let's start with the diagnosis of depression how do you know someone has depression and and uspe uh, yeah let's let's move from there sure so the diagnosis of depression rick the presence of at least five symptoms out of a list of nine now these symptoms have to be present for a certain period of time and must be causing decline in the person's level of functioning i will quickly go over that list this includes low or depressed mood loss of interest in pleasurable activities resulting in person becoming withdrawn from family and friends disturbance of sleep either sleeping too much or too little disturbance of appetite either again either eating too much or loss of appetite fatigue lethargy either slowing down of thought process and reduction of physical movements or getting very easily restless and agitated poor attention and concentration resulting in forgetfulness and memory problems feelings of low self esteem guilt or worthlessness negative thinking thoughts of death and in extreme cases suicidal thoughts that's what we call clinical depression so uh, dr seema just in general a person who lives in this world where we have technology where we have day to day operations and we are not psychiatrist or neurologist right so my question is some of the things you mentioned some of the points i think i have them right mm-hmm. everybody has one thing either i'm not sleeping well or mm-hmm. i'm sometimes mm-hmm. not happy how do i actually catch is it supposed to be all nine or which one so the two either one of the uh, the two symptoms that have to be present is the low or depressed mood and the second is either loss of interest in pleasurable activities you have brought up a good question yes five but they have to be present for a consistent period of time and there should be no other underlying causes of depression uh that uh, that will fall in the exogenous or external factors that cause depression so we need to make sure that there are no underlying medical problems there are no underlying substance or alcohol abuse problems uh there are no major um stressors in that person's life um there are not on certain medications so once all those criteria are ruled out and these symptoms are uh, are present for a certain period of time and then very important causing a decline in person's level of functioning that's how we diagnose clinical depression great and one thing i'll catch the like mm-hmm. low mood right so let's say i'm a very introvert and i like to not talk to people and i the matter as a you right mm-hmm. in in most of our mm-hmm. culture we said this is how i am i don't like laughing too much mm-hmm. i don't like funny jokes so how do you differentiate that mood to not and and i people are yeah. not drinking but yeah. 
Sure. So like I said, you know, you have to have a, s a group of these symptoms present. You cannot just, you know, you're brought up, yeah, I'm a shy person. I uh, don't like to interact too much with people. That's fine. But that's what your personality is. You have to have a constellation of group of these symptoms present at the same time for at least a duration of two weeks. And it has to d uh, cause a decline in your level of functioning. That will be the most important factor. So once again, Dallas, you're listening to Dr. Seema Haq, diplomat of American Pharmacy and Neurology on a Leader's Journey produced by Vishali Tucker. I'm DJ Moody here only because if you have any show today, if you have any show today, then our whole show will be complete. So what, causes, what are the causes of depression? Well, there are many possible causes of depression. First and foremost, there is this genetic link. If a person has a first degree relative, me, uh, meaning parents, brothers or sisters or children with a clinical diagnosis of depression, you know what? They are at, at least a 40% higher risk than general population for developing symptoms of depression. I like to divide causes of depression into two groups. The exogenous or external factors that I just uh, talked about, underlying medical issues like untreated thyroid problems, diabetes, very low vitamin D levels, medications, drug or alcohol problems, or situational stressors. I just touched on those. Now let's talk about the endogenous or biological causes of depression, or what we call clinical depression. These are the patients who present with exactly the same set of symptoms. They do not have any of the underlying factors that we just talked about make sure, again, we rule those factors out. But patients are clearly pointing out that they have no logical explanation for feeling like that. Now, researchers have noticed differences in the brains of people who have depression compared to those who don't. For instance, hippocampus, which is a small part of the brain vital to the storage of memories, appears to be smaller in some people with depression than those who don't. A smaller hippocampus has fewer serotonin receptors. What is serotonin? It is a brain chemical or a neurotransmitter that allows communication across circuits that connect brain regions involved in processing emotions. Some researchers have also found out that a stress hormone, um, cortisol, is produced in excess in depressed patients, and that has a shrinking effect on the development of hippocampus. So fewer or inactive serotonin receptors lead to depression. So very well uh, said, but to the layman, jitne log hamare sunre hai, shayad utni knowledge nahi hai hum logo mein, agar unko urdu ya hindi mein koi top paach cheeze bataye, joh aapne bataya hai, causes of depression, aap kaise usko summarize karengi chhote way mein? So, you know, if, okay, let's try, okay. Or, or English is fine, simple <laughs> okay, no, English. No, no, no. Nahi, uh, let's, let's talk in urdu. So, uh, depression ko mein se define karungi ke kisi ko कोई मेजर हेल्थ इशू और प्रॉब्लम नहीं है डायबिटीज थायराइड प्रॉब्लम वो नहीं है ड्रग और अल्कोहल प्रॉब्लम नहीं है उनके जिंदगी जिंदगी में कोई बड़ी मेजर परेशानी नहीं आई है लेकिन जैसे किसी की डेथ नहीं वी आर डिवोर्स दैट व्हाट वी विल कॉल सिचुएशनल डिप्रेशन और ये जो सिम्टम्स मैंने आपको बताए इनमें से कम से कम पांच का मौजूद होना जरूरी है at least two weeks of the period and the most important thing is that in the symptoms of the person has a lot of difference in their life. Their level of functioning, their job is a problem in their job, their school is a problem in their school. That's what I will call clinical depression. I'm sorry, I spoke again. Perfect. Very, very good. Thank you. एक बहुत बड़ा सवाल है और लिसनर्स ऑफ फनेशियो वीडियो वंस अगेन अगर आपने अभी ज्वाइन किया आप लोग सुन रहे हैं लीडर्स जर्नी ऑन फनेशियो वीडियो आई एम डीजे मोदी विद डॉक्टर सीमा हक हु इज अ डिप्लोमेट ऑफ अमेरिकन बोर्ड ऑफ साइकेट्री एंड न्यूरोलॉजी वंस अगेन डॉक्टर सीमा हक थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग ऑन दिस शो इज प्रोड्यूस बाय वैशाली ठक्कर ऑफ फनेशियो वीडियो सवाल ये है कि हमें हमारे सोसाइटी में या किसी भी सोसाइटी में डिप्रेशन को एक ठप्पा टैबू क्यों समझते हैं हम कि छुपाना है बताना नहीं है कि एक एक गंदी चीज है किसी को मत बताओ कि मेरे घर में या मेरे भाई को या मेरे बहन को या मुझे डिप्रेशन है वेल परहैप्स मेंटल इलनेसेस आर सिंपली नॉट एस कंक्रीट एस फिजिकल इलनेसेस आई मीन लेट्स एक्सेप्ट दैट यू कैन गो एंड गेट अ सीटी स्कैन इफ यू आर सस्पेक्टिंग अ मास बट यू कैन नॉट चेक योर सेरोटोनिन लेवल्स 
What causes a stigma is stereotypes. A lot of people believe that people who have mental illnesses are dangerous and unpredictable, but that's not true. Uh, medical science has come long ways and there has been tremendous development in the field of psychotropic medications. A uh, media portrayal is big one. Uh, people with mental illnesses are portrayed as being dangerous, evil, unable to live normal lives. It makes people afraid to seek help that they will be labeled as crazy. Big ones, race, culture, ethnicity, it plays a big factor too. Um, I hope I'm not ruffling any feathers here, but clinical depression is not just the result of not saying enough prayers in a day. Um, yes, happiness is a state of mind. I accept that. One has to be positive. They have to have good coping skills, but that cannot substitute for clinical tr treatment. People have to accept depression is a medical disease like diabetes, cancer. I often use the example of diabetes what is diabetes? It involves your pancreas and it is an imbalance of, ser uh, of insulin. What is depression? It involves your brain and it is an imbalance of serotonin. It is a physical disease. Whether we like it or not, here it is. So you touched up a point that depression is going to kill them, they aggressive, they don't want to kill them, they don't want to kill them, they don't want to kill them, they So how do people no, ke ye agar depression hai aur medicine kha raha hai hame danger nahi hai isse ya hum isko waise hi treat karenge jaise normal log ko treat karte hain well then you know that person's behavior will will uh, will uh, speak for itself uh, yes there are some more severe form of mood disorders as well but i should very quickly and clearly point it out that there is um, effective treatment for those disorders as well. So everyone who has a mood disorder is not aggressive or impulsive. Just keep. Another thing in this big in this society, a big factor is, um, although it is kind of catching up in South Asian community as well, underlying drug and alcohol problems. People don't bring it up. I mean, unfortunately, um, uh, you get a much um, um, you know exciting headlines with, uh, uh, you know, somebody had a mental disorders, but a lot of times there were underlying drug or alcohol problems that were making that person aggressive or out of control, and people were not talking about that. So, you know, that can be a factor as well. Thank you. So once again, Leader's Journey, Dr. Seema Haq on the studios of Fun Asia Radio. I'm DJ Modi, produced by Vaishali Tucker. Once again, listeners of Fun Asia Radio, this is your show. You can listen to someone's show to listen to someone's show. One question, Seema, uh, Dr. Seema has, what kind of challenges you face as your practices? What are the challenges you face doing this as a practice, every day listening to crazy people? Yeah, well, I will have to correct you here. Do not say crazy people. Yeah. People behavior can be crazy, but having a mood disorder does not make them crazy. So Beautiful. Let's talk thank about, you yeah, so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for uh, uh, recognizing that. Well, my biggest challenge, well, uh, I will specifically talk about South Asian community, lack of interest in treatment. Uh, people want to know when they are going to be off of medications even before I have started talking about treatment. So that is my biggest challenge. Other challenges at large, financial barriers, a strict control of psychotropic medications by insurance companies, that's also a big one. Um, uh, newer products have come out in market. They have much lower risk for side effects, but insurance companies don't want to pay for those. That's also a very big challenge. And, and, you know, I'll go back to the comment I made. Mm -hmm. the, the, the comment is, you know, again, being a doctor mm -hmm. and listening to folks who are your patients mm -hmm. and going deep down and having to fix the problem, mm -hmm. it's a very tough job. So thank you for what you do. Well, it's a very tough job. So one more thing, you know, mm -hmm. very commonly, I think most of us face is teenagers, right? Mm -hmm. So teenagers act we are living in 21st century. We have grown up in a different society. We had different kind of parenting. We have different expectations from our kids. They are very different from how we grew up in our 80s and 90s with all the technology and all the social media and everything that's happened. They are 10 times ahead of us. We cannot cope up with their speed. So a lot of times we don't know if they are 
talking crazy, I'll not use the word crazy anymore, if they are acting misbehaving with you as a teenager, if they are not listening to you or they have a direction, why is he not talking, why does he come to me when he needs something, how do we know if the teenagers mm -hmm. are going through depression or that's how they are? Because sure. we don't live in, we have not grown up in this world and in this technology world. Well, that's a very good question. So let me very quickly say that, that depression in teenagers will also present with some of the signs and symptoms that we just talked about, but there are definitely some symptoms that are unique to this age group. Um, if you have a teenager who's going through um, some of the symptoms that I'm just going to talk about, like they seem very irritable and angry, um, appearing defiant. Um, so are, I'll, I'll just say, uh -huh. uh, what was the angry, Kepele? What was the word you said? Um, irritable. Irritable and angry. Irritable. Most, irritable. Of, yeah. mm -hmm. most of the teenagers, I would mm -hmm. say, are like that. Do okay. I, what do I do next? Okay. Then, okay, so again, remember the symptoms that we talked about, those symptoms have to be present. Um, they are having difficulty bouncing back from stressful situations. They are routinely isolating from friends and family. They are having difficulty falling or staying asleep. They are either eating more or less than usual. They have uh, very poor self-esteem. These symptoms have to be present consistently for a certain. Of course, you cannot label a child with a depression if they threw a tantrum, um, you know, let's say even for a week or two. But a constellation of symptoms have to be present. You will have to put things together. Okay. So, so again, I'm saying as a parent, very hard to decide, should we take our teens to the doctor or is it a normal teen? No, so the big one uh, as, a, as a parent, I would say as well, not just as a psychiatrist, um, level of functioning. How are they doing in a school? How's their performance in a school? What is uh, their relationship with, uh, with their friends or family? That will be the biggest, um, uh, biggest uh, telltale signs. Great. And what about, is there any relationship between bullying and depression? Well, yeah, children that experience bullying are at a much greater risk for developing de depression than children who don't. In fact, one study finds that the consequences of childhood bullying, including depression, can persist even 40 years after bullying occurred. So that's pretty significant. Wow. So good to know. Yeah. Bullying is a big, big game changer. Yeah. Well, I still remember, you know, the young fellow, my classmate who used to call me four eyes when I was in fifth grade because I was the only girl who used to wear glasses. And you know what? There were so many kids in my class. I still remember that boy who called me four eyes. I still remember his face and name. So let's go back to the four <laughs> eyes boy, right? So, yeah. so did you go through any challenges to overcome that? Well, yeah, what I used, yeah, I mean, I used to forget my glasses at home all the time, you know, and then would get into trouble in school myself. So, yeah. yeah it's is depression a permanent condition? Yes, depression is a permanent condition, and there's no cure for depression, let me say that. But there are lots of effective treatments. People can recover from depression, and they can live long and healthy lives. Um, there is um, 80 to 90 percent of patient, you know, uh, patients with depression eventually do respond to treatment. So there is no cure, but there is treatment. But we do not have a cure for a lot of um, common conditions. We do not have a cure for common cold and flu. So, so what about minor mild depression? Is there something called thoda sa hai? Well, yes, um, there, uh, yeah, there can be milder symptoms of depression too. Um, then these, the symptoms that I just, you know, I, and I don't want to go over that list again because of time limitation, a few of those symptoms will be present and they are not going to cause that much decline in the person's level of functioning. So uh, the very important is, you know, you just don't look at the, just at the symptoms, like somebody may have poor sleep, poor appetite, uh, feeling tired for a few days, but what kind of problem is it is causing in that person's life? Low levels of depression, um, you know, that is you have 
brought up a very good question. Although I just said that, you know, most experts think you cannot prevent depression and others are not sure, but you, I know you, you cannot control your genes, you cannot control chemicals in your brain and your environment, but things that you can do to avoid depression, those, those, um, those choices are there. Thank you. Once again, Leader's Journey, Dr. Seema Haq. She is a diplomat of American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. This show is produced by Vishali Tucker. I'm DJ Moody. Sirf aapke liye Dallas, aapke community ke liye. Kyunke aap log shayad koi sunke is show ko apne ghar ko, apne family ko, apne dost ko bacha sake ya unko thik direction de sake. So, does uh, depression makes you gain weight? Well, um, yeah, uh, depression, uh, people with depression can experience weight gain um, due to their condition or sometimes also from medications that are we use to treat depression. Depression, as I mentioned earlier, can be associated with overeating, poor food choices, a more sedentary lifestyle, so that, yes, it can directly affect body weight. Um, as far as medications are concerned, there are a lot more choices now for medications. Most of the antidepressants do not cause more than two to three pounds weight gain. Um, that's what we have seen in studies. But uh, yes, um, low energy, uh, lack of motivation, sedentary lifestyle does lead to weight gain. And that is uh, one of the symptoms of depression. Why are we scared of taking depression medicines, medication? Why are we scared of medicine in general? Well, you know, nobody is happy. You know, in, in the perfect world, we all want to be symptom free. Um, we don't want to uh, be medicated for any, for any particular reason. And I think it is also, uh, it is, you know, just one of the, stigmas people like I said um, are still concerned that being depressed means that they are going to be taken as crazy or aggressive which is not the case I think people are afraid that uh, if I'm going to take medications for depression people are going to think that I'm incompetent I'm evil I cannot lead a normal life but that's not true. I'm going to throw this one in and maybe one minute you can spend on it. Mm -hmm. Is there an organic way to fight depression like exercising, eating yes. right? Do yes, yes. There are definitely, um, um, there are, you know, exercising regularly is one of the best things definitely you can do for your mental health. And there are studies that prove that, um, that exercise helps with mild to moderate levels of depression, ad getting adequate sleep, eating healthy. Uh, cutting back on social media time. That's a big one. Okay. Cutting back you know, on social media, media time. Dallas, if you have nothing to do, take this. Do you say to your patients that you use 1 hour, 4 hours, 2 hours? Any yeah. time okay. you suggest? Of course. What do you suggest to your patients? Well, you know, uh, if, if for, at least for 2 hours before they go to bed, there should be no time spent on social media. 2 hours? Are <laughs> you kidding? Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know. So before you may not be able to sleep tonight then. <laughs> so two hours before going to yeah. bed, don't use any social media. Yeah. No, uh, no. We sleep with social media. I know, I know. <laughs> you are in trouble. But you know what? I'm back in office on Monday. So come and see me. <laughs> and any anything else beside downsizing social media and exercising? Um, eating healthy, building a strong relationships, you know. Regular physical checkups. They are very important. Make sure that you don't have any... Uh, underlying health issues and problems like low vitamin D is very common. Um, getting that treated adequately, that helps. Thyroid problems, some of the medical issues that I, you know, I, uh, I spoke about earlier. So if you are in good physical health, you can also lower your chances of developing depression. So, Dr. Seema Haq, once again, thank you so very much on behalf of the uh, Fun Asia radio team, management team, Vishali Tucker and me. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming to our show this evening. We have a minute. Do you want to say something that you have not said yet? Well, I just want people to keep in mind that um, depression is the most treatable of mental disorders. Between 80 to 90 percent of patients with depression eventually respond to treatment. Please take treatment of depression seriously. Let me say this. According to CDC, the rate of suicide among those aged 
10 to 24 has increased nearly 60 percent between 2007 and 2018. Depression is a serious disease. It kills people. It can be very adequately treated. We are in 21st century. There is no reason not to treat depression. Thank you so much. Dallas will be back after the break. I love you, Dallas.